for day one. So we're going to go ahead and graph this cubic function. So I went into y equals, I guess, the home screen uh, is just this. And so if I want to do normal calculations, I can be on this one. But if I want to actually look at a graph, I need to tell it what graph to look at. So I'm going to hit y equals on that top left. And then I'm going to put in the function 4. And this is my x value. That button right there is going to give you x. Um, and then I'm going to hit the caret. It's going to pop it up top for an exponent. And I'm going to hit 3 for full cubed. Uh, I, I am still up top, so I'm going to have to go to the right, and then I get back down here. So then minus, and again, don't, don't use a, uh, a negative symbol. Use a minus sign. Um, 8, x, and then I can hit the squared button, which is right here. Um, minus 15x, and then plus 3. Okay, so I have input my function. Um, if I go ahead and hit graph, I'm going to... It's going to tell the calculator to go ahead and graph that function. Now, I don't see the entire function, so I am going to adjust my window. So I'm going to go over here and hit window. And I thought left and right it was fine. So my x min and my x max, that controls left and right. Now I'm going to look at y min and y max, and I need to be a little more down. So I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to go ahead and make my y min negative 25. I'm just kind of guessing, and I'm going to go ahead and graph. And I hope to see then a better view of the minimum. And uh, oh, it looks like I didn't actually go down far enough. So I'm going to go back to hit window. And let's go down and just make it negative 40. And I'm going to hit graph again. And I'm going to see a better graph. Now, the, the, the humps I can see, I can see the y-intercept, I can see the x-intercepts, I get a better view of the graph. OK, so I want to find the y-intercept. Now remember, the y-intercept for every graph always corresponds to when x equals 0. Well, it turns out that I can use this button called trace. I can hit trace, and then some people who are waiting for it to prompt you, if you just hit trace and then hit 0, it's going to say, hey, I'm going to let x equal 0, and then hit enter. So it's going to plug in 0 for you, and all it's doing is plugging 0 into the function, and it's getting back 3, which I guess you could probably just look at the function and know that the y-intercept is 3, but that just found it for me. So the, so the y-intercept is just 0, 3. Again, I can hit trace any value. I could hit trace um, 1.5. And it's going to plug in 1.5 into the function and tell me the y-value. So it's telling me f of 1.5. So if you want to evaluate the function at any value, you can just hit trace and tell it to plug in 4. And it's just going to tell it to you. Now this one's off the screen. You can't see it, but 4, 71 would be what you would get if you plugged in 4. OK, let's find the x-intercepts. OK, now that's harder. The y-intercept is easy. Y-intercept is just trace 0 because you're just plugging in x equals 0. The x-intercepts, these guys, 1, 2, 3 of them, those are more difficult. So see that's blue up there? So I'm going to hit second trace, and it's going to calculate. And I want to calculate zeros. Remember, zeros, roots, and x-intercepts are the exact same thing. And you're going to see these three questions. Your calculator is going to say left bound question mark. OK, if I was interested in finding that one, I need to be to the left of it. OK, so I need to scroll left. Scroll, scroll, scroll. And now I'm to the left of it, so I can enter. Now I need to go to the right of it. So I scroll and I hit enter. And then it says guess. So just get somewhere close. Just take two clicks back. And so I'm somewhere close to that 0, and then boom. And now my calculator tells me that when I plug in negative 1.307, I'm going to get a y value of 0. That's this x-intercept. That's one of them. All right, let's find the middle one. Second, calc, 0. Now you can scroll down to 2, or you can actually just hit 2. I'm going to go over here, and I'm somewhere to the left of the 0. Now I'm going to scroll to the right of that 0, and then I'm going to get somewhere close. And it's going to give me, when x equals 0.183, I'm going to get a y value of 0. OK, now I'm going to find this last one. Second, calc. I'm going to hit 2 for 0. Scroll over. I mean, I, I could do it right here. I mean, I am to the left. But I'm, now I'm to the left of that 0. Scroll to the right of that 0. And then get close to the 0. And then enter. And then it's going to tell me this. Now remember, if it tells you this thing right here, this is scientific notation, and this is point zero 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 four, which is your calculator's way of telling you 
this is zero. Okay, so whenever you see something like this, that's zero. That's not actually a really small decimal, it actually is zero. Your calculator just numerically finds them, and sometimes it doesn't know to put zero. Okay, so now I've found the three x-intercepts and the y-intercept. Okay, let's find the local max. So I'm going to find this value. Second, calc, and I want to find a maximum, so I want to do number four. So we can scroll down to number four and hit enter, or you can just hit four. Okay, and it's going to ask you the same questions. Left bound, okay, I'm trying to find the maximum, so I need to be to the left of the maximum. So I'm going to scroll over, and I'm to the left of the maximum. I hit enter. Now right bound, enter, and then I just guess, you just get somewhere close. And it's going to find the highest point between those two bounds, and it found you the maximum. The maximum occurs at this x value, and that's the actual maximum y value meaning that y value, 8.275, is bigger than all the y values around it. It's the max. Okay, now let's find minimum. Second, calc, minimum, so number three. So I'm gonna scroll down, and I'm to the left of this minimum. Enter, scroll to the right, get to the right of the minimum, and then get somewhere close to the minimum, and hit enter. And it's going to find me the minimum is at this value, and that's the actual minimum y value. Okay, so y-intercepts, x-intercepts, maxes, mins. Let's say I wanted to evaluate f of 2.25. It's okay, just hit trace and tell it, hey, 2.25. It's going to take x and plug in 2.25 for x, and you hit enter, and boom, boom. It tells you exactly what the y value is at that x value. Okay. Now, this question's a little more difficult, but your calculator can do it. When does the function equal negative 20? That's what this is saying. That's harder for your calculator, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to y equals, we're gonna scroll down, and we're gonna put negative 20, remember negative 20, not minus 20, negative when it's just by itself, minus when it's actually in a line of code. And so if I graph that, I'm gonna be graphing two things. I'm gonna be graphing my original function, and the function negative 20, and think about it. That's exactly what this is saying. When does the blue equal the red? The blue is the f of x, the red is now negative 20, and we need to find the intersection of these curves. Well, lucky for us, the calculator does it for us. Second, calc, intersect. So just hit five, and this one's really easy. All you gotta do is scroll anywhere close. Just get close, to the intersection and hit enter, enter, enter. That's the intersection. At that x value, that equals that y value. So the blue curve and the red curve are the exact same at that x value, which means that x value produces a blue value of negative 20. And then we do the same thing three more times, two more times. Second calc, intersect, five, scroll over to the other intersection, enter, enter, enter. And we find the intersection, meaning there's another x value that makes a y value of negative 20. And second calc, intersect again. Scroll, 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 scroll. It doesn't matter if I'm past it. And it finds it. Okay? Those are the three intersection values of those curves. Um, so those are the buttons we want to be able to work on. Y-intercept, x-intercept, local maxes, local mins, using trace to evaluate a function, and then answering the question, when does the y value equal negative 20? Okay, when we wanna equal, we're really just setting the curves equal to each other. The next one is just more practice, it's actually doing the exact same thing, so I'm gonna let you kinda of work on that on your own, but we have to be able to find a y-intercept, the x-intercept, this is the maximum, this is the minimum, we can use trace to find a function. Now on this one, it might give you an error right away when you do f of 20, because think of your window. If your window is still negative 10 to 10, and you tell it to evaluate something outside of that window, it might have a problem. So you can always go and change your window and make it go to like 30. Then if I hit graph, I'm gonna have a more right, rightward view of things. And if I wanted to, then I could go ahead and hit trace and hit 15 or 20. Oops, sorry. It's still graphing. Trace, hit tw um, 15 or whatever, and then it'll plug it in. So if you want to plug in values, you got to make sure your window. So on this one, you got to make sure your window is going to be bigger than that. 
Same thing here. If you want this, you're going to have to drop your window. Okay? If you only wanted to see one of the curves, you could go back over here. You could just delete it, or you could highlight that right there and hit enter, and now the red won't graph. It'll just be the blue. Okay, day one, learning how to work this. We learned y equals. We learned how to adjust the window. We can do zoom, and again, we can do zoom standard, which is the negative 10 to 10. So if zoom 6 is always going to go back to this window. Now again, for our curve, it wasn't the best. You could even do zoom fit. You could do zoom zero. So if you scroll down here, you can see zoom fit. That's your calculator saying, I think this is the best window. And so they think this is the best window, which I don't think this is. I think this is terrible. This is not even showing you these humps here. Okay. So your calculator doesn't always zoom correctly. So if you actually just manually do it, see how like it zoom fit, it made those way too big. We really liked it negative, what, like 50 to like 20. And then we actually got a pretty good graph of what it looked like. So zoom fit sometimes gives you a ridiculously bad window. Uh, we can trace things, we can calculate things, and tomorrow we'll work on even more buttons.